Hello everyone and welcome to So Many Games at a Time. My name is Joachim. My name is Kai. And uh, today we're going to play Tales for Tussle, which I thought about backing, but didn't back way back when. So I don't really know much about it. Kain here knows way more than me. <laughs> which was a mistake for you not backing. But, uh, my opinion, see how he feels afterwards. Mm -hmm. But if for those of you that feel the same, don't worry, they're coming out with another Kickstarter uh, with an expansion. Don't know when that's coming out. But <laughs> I hope at the end of the day, my wallet isn't crying even more. It's already a river. It's going to end up an ocean. <laughs> it's a busy month, isn't it? <laughs> it's a crazy month. Uh, May 2022, by the way. Almost. Still April, actually. Oh, true, yeah. Mm. One more. Less than a week, actually, till May. Mm. Mm. All right, so in Townsfolk Tussle, our sheriff has died. And so what we do is we play one of the, I think, nine available Townsfolk and we go seek out vengeance and go after the characters that have killed our sheriff. All right, and uh, these characters are called ruffians. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of them. I can't remember how many there are, but there's at least eight, probably more than that, maybe 12. No, I only know there's a gun shooting dog. Yeah, yeah. he has no idea what he's doing. He's just walking around and the guns are just going on. Shooting people, yeah. <laughs> That's all I remember. The little wagons. Yeah. But yeah, so what we do is it's essentially a boss battler where we move around a map and the map will be set up depending on the boss that we're facing. We move around, try to beat them till they're dead, and then rip off a few limbs, equip them to ourselves, and tackle the next person. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, throughout the game, uh, there's different phases. We've got our townsfolk phase where you can buy it and equip gear, uh, accomplish town events. Uh, and town events could be things like you get an extra buff, or you get some money, or you all have to do something. Uh, I haven't gone through all of them. Uh, there's a big stack of cards in front of us right now. Uh, some of them are secret, so some of them you keep to yourself, and the rest are public. Um, after that, every, after everyone goes and buys some good gear, then we go into the battle phase and wreck stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm just smiling because uh, I'm going to be play, playing as a... Granny Melba, and I was reading her backstory. <laughs> they were already talking about that she has uh, affairs with the peddler, who's basically the market person. And it's true because she has a tattoo on her arm. Oh, it says Pete. Oh. <laughs> She's also got panties in her hair. Yeah, that too. So <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me just uh, tell you yeah. the, uh, the backstory, okay? First of all, the quote is Come give Granny some kisses. <laughs> so she's a hard hitting sharpshooter who always gets her discount. Yeah, probably. She sleeps around. So, everyone in Eureka Springs knows <laughs> Granny Melba. She's getting some. Some say she's older than the town itself. But don't let her age fool you. Granny has more spunk than most. She was a renowned stage performer in her youth and was no stranger to the spotlight. After years of fame and partying, she settled down in Eureka Springs to a simple life with her humdrum husband, Pappy. But after his recent passing, Granny reverted back to her old self. Whoa. She's had flings with a number of townsfolk in a matter of months, including the peddler. No wonder her panties are in her hair. <laughs> Don't go spouting rumors, though. They prefer to keep things hush-hush. Defending Eureka Springs is a no-brainer for Granny Melba. She's got a new lease on life, and no one's going to take it away from her. You go, girl. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, I am Georgie Iron Gut. And this is one of the, I guess, one of the stretch goal characters. Um, it wasn't part of, the, he wasn't part of the original set. Um, so I figured I'd try him out. Uh, and Georgie Irongut is essentially, uh, just based on the picture, I think, a cow that's gone mad. And in his lineage, what happens is there's a parasite that takes over whoever the person is in charge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so he is essentially dead and this parasite is taking over his, taking over his body. So his quote is, Urgle Gerbler. Gr <laughs> <laughs> That's his quote. That's what he says. And uh, it says, a powerhouse glutton with boundless energy. So Georgie Irongut, the Iron Guts are held in high regard around Eureka, Eureka, la, la, Eureka Springs. They are all there. I can't speak today. The R's. That's okay, that makes me look good, because normally I can't speak. <laughs> but English is your second language. Well, not even. <laughs> That's right. Third or fourth. <laughs> yeah, I can only speak for one. <laughs> All right. They're a royal family whose lineage can be traced back to the town's humble beginnings. But as of late, Iron Good family members have been partaking in odd activities. 
like lumbering around the old peat bog and eating out of garbage bins. I mean, that's not, you know, out of character for I'm cows. I'm going to guess Granny Melba didn't fool around with the cow. You okay. never know, man. Georgie. You never know. He does have an iron gut. He anyway. does, yeah. <laughs> uh, and this may be due to the virus that's working its way down the family line. Previously infecting Georgie's father, it looks like the virus has found a new host in Georgie himself. Uh, ironically, the other townsfolk wouldn't dare mention the odd behaviors of an iron gut. They're, they are royalty, after all. Now, in order to protect its host body, the virus inside Georgie Iron Guts has taken up in arms to fight the ruffians. Perhaps this germ isn't so bad, after all. Mm. I don't know, like, if that does that to you, that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I think that would immediately break up my marriage. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. So I forgot to mention with Granny Melba, uh, her nickname apparently is the Flirty Old Gunslinger. Makes <laughs> sense. And also she starts with two pieces of gear. She has a Rooty Tutor uh, that she can fire and also Granny's Cane. Then she's farsighted, which basically means the farther she's away from her target, the more uh, the better her accuracy gets. Mm -hmm. And also she has a lover's discount because she and the peddler sure seem well acquainted. I receive a two coin discount when purchasing peddler gear worth seven coins or more. That's pretty good. Yeah, so I'm gonna go for the expensive stuff, probably. For me, Georgie Iron Gut is his uh, nickname is the Expired Royal. <laughs> uh, and his two abilities are Leftovers and Quick Trotter. Leftovers essentially means uh, as an accessory, you can have a consumable. And when I consume that, it doesn't get discarded like it would normally. Instead, I can keep it and use it in a later round. I can only use it once though. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is Quick Trotter. So at the cost of two Moxie, I can move four squares in a straight line. So it can move up and down or left and right, any movement orthogonally. I'm not sure what the benefit is of that. Um, maybe the well, pa Paris I just took over, so I'm just going this way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking really Monty Python. Run away! Run away! Run away! <laughs> <laughs> Looking at this, we both start off with like pretty low accuracy. You've got minus two, I've got minus one. It's not... well, I just have to be really far away yeah. from my, for, to shoot my gun. But my, my, my gun can only shoot one turn, and then it has to reload another turn, and then shoot again. Um, so um, yeah. It's going to make it difficult. Well, you know, we just have to buy stuff that yeah. increases our accuracy, I guess. Uh, one thing that I wanted to note as well is typically the game happens over four rounds, um, uh, progressively supposedly getting more difficult and more challenging. But what we're going to do is we're only going to have three rounds just because two of the rounds, the second and the third, are pretty much the same in terms of mechanically. So what happens is in the first round you play, play the boss, or fight the boss as normal, the second round they get an additional attack. And same with the third round, they get an additional attack. Um, so they're kind of the same. And then the last round is when, I'll, I'll show you guys in a bit, where the ruffian has a different side of the board and it's a totally different setup for the final fight. And also, if we shave up a round, which means we can make, we can play other games. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> make videos this is true. <laughs> also, uh, I wanted to add, um, I mentioned before that I didn't back this uh, way back because I thought the solo didn't look interesting enough. There were also some videos that influenced me of that back then. But of course, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. Anyway, um, but uh, I don't even remember, to be honest. There were some content creators who were not happy with it. But, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, yeah. Now, of course, when people get all their stuff and you see it on Instagram and you see people being happy and you see kind, saying, oh, I got it. It's, just, it's, it's a pretty <laughs> game. Yeah, then I'm like, oh, maybe I should. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see uh, how I feel at the end. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to uh, to play it and see, see how it goes. It's going to be good. Uh, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Low expectations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I guess we won't go through like a whole rules teach, but will just jump right into the game. Yeah, exactly. You can always make a rules video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>